Hi folks, Tom Hart, City Manager here in Grand Prairie. Good to have you with us for another show. We, uh, we want to talk about what's happening in our great city and uh, give you a little information and hopefully get you a little excited about uh, some of the things that are on the way to Grand Prairie, Texas. Uh, this morning, uh, we're going to talk about a new project uh, that our voters, uh, you, voted in uh, recently, uh, overwhelmingly, by the way, and that is the, the project we're calling the EPIC. Uh, and it's pretty epic. So let me tell you, uh, I've got Rick Harrell with me today. Rick, good Hi, morning. Good morning. Uh, Rick is, I would think everybody by now knows, is our director of Parks and Recreation and has led us to a gold medal city. We are one of the few gold medal cities in the United States and, uh, and we're very proud of that. And Rick and his team have uh, delivered that for us. And now, a new project, the EPIC. Oh, it's, it's extremely exciting. And once again, you know, the success of the city and the department is because of the engagement with its citizens. And uh, it was an exciting day, uh, election day, when they said, let's go do this uh, special project. Let's continue the synergy and the excitement that the summit delivered at Central Park and create what I've been saying next to Fair Park because of its longtime legacy, the most important park in Dallas and Fort Worth is going to be right here in Grand Prairie Central Park. I'm not going to argue with you a bit about that. I, I agree with that. Uh, you know, a lot of people are not aware. Uh, Councilman Dick Frigo was very instrumental many years ago in uh, pushing the city to acquire that property. And, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, we need to applaud his vision for that. Uh, uh, that puts some property in the city's... Uh, hands that is going to end up being known, well, it's already getting known around the country and even other countries. So the summit and all the other amenities. Well, but today is to talk about the EPIC. Uh, Rick, first of all, just give us a quick overview. What is the EPIC going to be? The EPIC is going to be, and I'm using the word right now, life-changing center. You know, it's not big to be big. It's not, you know, for any other reason, but we're gonna change more lives. So think of it as a part rec center, a part water park, a part amphitheater, a, a part library. It's gonna have Texas's largest all-inclusive playground that we're, our park board just dreams about it every week. Uh, and so it's gonna have more trails, the project. It's gonna have uh, more opportunities. Um, we're gonna finish out some of our green space and so it's going to be for every citizen, no matter what your age is, something really special. The rec center is going to be larger than you're used to here. And one of our reasons for that is we've studied it in depth. We believe we have chances to bring in ancillary revenue. When we bring in ancillary revenue, it obviously keeps our user rates for residents mm -hmm. lower. So it's going to be such a special facility, indoor trails, uh, you know, all kinds of craziness for all ages. What's the mission of this? Well, you know, as we, we like to say, and I think, you know, through your leadership and that of our mayor and council is, we know and we have proven that these facilities create community, they change lives, they're economic development stimulus, all of those reasons. And we do, we've seen the summit. You know, we just completed a film, Summit Success Stories, where we went back and documented incredible stories uh, from, from businesses coming to town, like our Aspens at Central Park would not have happened without Central Park, to people getting ready to sell their land and retire, only to see the summit up and says, hey, we're gonna sell all right, we're gonna sell our land in East Texas. To people who changed their life around with, with healthy habits and a gentleman who lost 100 pounds in six months, just a whole myriad of success stories. So uh, that's what it is. It's going to change lives. We're going to take the teenage group. You know, a lot of cities, when you get to be 14, say, we'll see you when you're 22. We're going to have elements in there. And why will they be successful? Because they will be designing their elements. The whole community needs to have their thumbprint on this project. And that's what excites us in engaging our citizens and coming around the city, taking the time to make sure anyone that has a concept goes on our list. Well, and I ask mission because to me, anything we do ought to have a clear mission. And 
one more time. Take me through that. Changing lives. Changing lives, absolutely. Okay. Examples. Uh, changing lives. Well, again, some of those things I said a moment ago. I, I believe. I believe again that you'll have people use this uh, to to get become more healthy. No question. Okay. We're going to have every state of of the of wellness you can imagine. Okay. You know, if you want to take spin classes, here's the place to do it. Okay. You're going to have a trail unlike other indoor trails, Tom, that is going to go up and down and be a part of the architectural view of the facility. Okay. You're going to have water opportunities that way. So health and wellness, if you want to have Pilates, you get it. Okay. Secondly, we want our youth to spend and have an opportunity to really spend their leisure time in a quality, safe environment. We, we, that's been proven in our profession. Fort Worth started that years and years ago when they had midnight basketball. And all of a sudden, what happened in Fort Worth when midnight basketball started? They saw the crime uh, rate drop. So we want to get kids in our facility. We want to get youngsters in our facility. We want to get people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s and 60s. And one of the most grateful things we've heard about the water park is the summit members say, hey, don't leave us out of that opportunity to go down that water park. And I said, oh, the lazy river? You, no, no, we want to go down those slides. So when we say it's for everyone, the summit is always going to be our 50 and over facility. Right. And, and that's age restricted. I don't care if you're 102 years old, 112 years old. This facility will change lives for everybody. I'm chuckling, but I know. I mean, I, I, I've talked to people of all ages that are excited about this. I mean, you know, we talk about changing life, but they're just going to have some fun, too. It's oh. going to be a quality of life. Uh, okay, yeah. so back to mission. Quality, are you going to change right. lives? Quality. Now, go ahead. Let me, let me bring this one. The second one I mentioned was create community. Okay. What does that mean, create community? Tom, as I said, next to Fair Park in Dallas, this is going to be the community rallying place. Okay. And you are, when this gets done, you're gonna, it doesn't matter. Let's say you don't want to go to the summit, you don't want to go to the epic, you don't want to go to the amphitheater, which is gonna be finished. You just want to enjoy Central Park. It's not Central Park. It is Central Park because it's in the center of our community, but we are paying homage to Central Park in New York because we have many of the same elements. That being, we have land that's set aside for private development, which, when developed, help pays the maintenance of cost just like Central Park, if you think, of all the periphery uh, private development. Uh, we have outstanding facilities there, but we have incredible green space that's very, very important to us. And uh, you are going to go out there on a Saturday and Sunday, especially when the Epic is done, and you're going to see a guitar player with his case opened playing a guitar. And you're going to see an artist out there painting, and you can buy their paint. You're going to see that for many, many reasons, but you're going to have, you're within 10 minutes of the majority of our population. And we're working on a trails program. A lot of people have asked us that, both a transportation department on street trails and in our parks department off street trails. So it's just going to be a place for festivals and events and us to come together as community, which is which I think is the Grand Prairie. I think the town loves that. So creating community. That, yes. That's great. Economic development. I believe that, but explain that. Well, I think uh, one of the things that we would like to have went out, because all we could do was educate in the process, uh, so we could only educate. And there was a lot of things I wanted to say that we couldn't say. I will be shocked if we don't find a restaurant that's interested, a hotel that's interested. This is groundbreaking stuff we're talking about. This facility is nowhere, as you know, anywhere in America right now. I had a, 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 we're getting calls of, of architects, and one architect called me yesterday and said, would be the dream project of my career. This architect has done over 100 major projects. That's the kind of excitement it has. So it is going to create uh, opportunities for the, the private sector, which again, the reason that excites us, two things. One is long-term maintenance of Central Park. Secondly, though, is helping our rates for residents in Central Park. So I think that's going to be the biggest surprise to citizens is what it's going to deliver. Well, I, I again, I'm not surprised. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, I have already had serious meetings with uh, a developer interested in a hotel project out there. And one of the big parts of his interest is because of what we're looking at building there. So. Yeah, I think economic development will be a key part of it. So 
Well, that's a pretty clear mission. And I, I think anything we do ought to start with a mission and, and there ought to be a reason. But, but again, I come back to the fact, uh, I think people are excited, 75%. That is pretty strong vote. I mean, that indicates to me that our community is excited about this project. I think they want to have fun. I mean, when we talk about economic development, Rick, don't you think it'll make a difference on people wanting to live here, oh. wanting to stay here, and home values and so forth? We, one of our last meetings, there's a lady uh, and, uh, that, and the gentleman lives right next to Central Park. And I said, man, I wish I had your guy's house right now because you're in for some pleasant surprises. And uh, she said, yes, we're glad we have it too. No question, already proven on the summit. So you're just gonna take this times I infinity, what's gonna happen on that. I mean, it's just gonna be the place to come. That in conjunction with our school district, Tom, which we hadn't mentioned yet, mm -hmm. this is gonna be a great partnership of taking some of our career kids, getting them involved. And uh, again, no matter what the age, and again, I'm not leaving out 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and above, but we're going to do some incredible things for, with our youth in our community in partnership. Partnerships are Grand Prairie, I think. I think, you know, from our nonprofits or school district, it is a town and businesses that works together. And the opportunities we're going to have that way are really limitless right now. Rick, you know, I think when people think about rec centers, everybody thinks about basketball courts and some weightlifting and that stuff. But we're talking about way beyond that. Library? Yes. Component? Yes. And probably some uniqueness. You know, we'll be looking with Amy Sprinkles and her staff, but probably some great electronic stuff and some things that are wow you. Yeah, we're not talking about a traditional you know, big library. It's, it's I think it'll be, be really exciting. Unique. Uh, but this, this area that I, I, I'm really excited about is, and I don't even know what we call it, but we've talked about uh, it, it will have something like a video, music, uh, uh, so it's not just for young people that are no. interested in athletics and sports. That's it's, right. We're going to touch on a lot of things, we, we? We hope everyone, including your park director, is concerned about health and wellness now. Uh, no matter what, what age they are. So we're going to have, I guess we said, Tom, as you said, everything regarding that. Okay. Way. Any sport is going to be in that facility. But the other component... Racquetball? Uh, there's going to be racquetball. Really? Yes, okay. And I'll tell your viewers when no, you're not we'll, around that we'll story sometimes. Uh, but, uh, and, I, and also a Starbucks type. I think both of those we have to have in. Met a gentleman who said, Brick, just do that. And I said, we'll, we'll put that in. Uh, but it's going to have, we found out a couple years ago, that there's over a hundred bands that you know play in garages and that just three, four, or five people getting together. So we're going to have a place for those summit members, not anything like the summit, but a place where stage where people can practice. But let's say take it a little bit further. So let's say let's just say I'm in high school. I have a band. We got a place we could come in and actually perform for your friends. Okay. At the same time, we have the video group from our high school come in and shoot a music video for them. Okay. We have our graphic arts kid do their band logo. We then go into a recording studio and record their band on CDs and you could sell them in the Epic Store. Wow. So, I mean, just the whole gambit. Art, same way with people in art. Uh, you know, we're talking about, a, we got a meeting just a few minutes ago with an artist in residence program. Well, we will bring in, hopefully, uh, and again, a lot of these are still concepts, but bring in an artist that's on their way up in Texas art. We're going to ask them two things. We're going to provide residency for them for four months or six months, but we're going to have a piece of art that becomes a legacy project. You've used the word legacy, and, I, and we should have started with that because this park is going to be a legacy park. It's a legacy. The epic is truly the epic. And uh, so we're going to have, a th and not only we're going to get an up rising Texas artist that's also going to teach that art, whatever the discipline is. You may be in sculpting one, one time. Maybe it's going to be in ceramics uh, or oils, but whatever it is, every person uh, needs to have their thumbprint on the building. And when we make these rounds in the city, which we'll be announcing real soon, we want everyone to be, be able to take a part of it. You know, a lot of people are aware, Rick and I have had the opportunity to work together for many, many years, and I guess uh, even, uh, even us learn a few things occasionally. And uh, one thing we've learned is this, is the more ideas you get into a project, the better it becomes. That's number one. Number two, we've learned synergy. I mean, when you create a synergy, and that's what we see happening out there, it becomes more successful. 
And then number three is quality and excitement in the project. Not not wasting money, not opulent, no. just something that people will be proud of and want to use. So I think that will have all of the elements. Uh, I'm excited you're going to be out in the community getting those ideas. Uh, uh, we're going to be surprised where they're going to come from. It may be a six-year-old that's got a great idea that will become part of that facility, and it may be a 90-year-old. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to listen, and we're going to take, and, uh, and you know, we've got a general idea. We've talked about it. I mean, you're hearing it. It's This is kind of what the project's going to be. But now we get to start fine-tuning it. And so please, if you've got some thoughts, I mean, get them to Rick and his staff. Uh, Rick, I, I've got to I've got to stop and just take uh, one moment and say I, I am really proud of our mayor and council. Uh, their their vision and leadership uh, on this is going to put this city on the map. Incredible! Uh, that's where it starts. Incredible. Uh, I mean, it really is. And you've had a parks board that's been really great. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, gosh. Uh, can you contain B.J. Nichols? No. I mean, he's uh, he's got to be just He's floating. almost out of control. I, 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 I know With that. excitement. But, you know, uh, I think that's why our city is able to, I, I have to say, thank you to our mayor and council. They, uh, their, their vision, you know. their leadership, and putting this out there, uh, that just says a lot about them. Uh, and, and the bottom line, I think the citizens uh, stood up and said, hey, we got confidence in you. 75%, that is a strong strong margin. And you know, Rick, I think a lot of the folks that even voted against it, even though there weren't all that many, but the ones that did, I think a lot of them had some misinformation. I heard stuff during the campaign, gosh, excessive water use in a drought time. No, this actually, the water is recirculated. It's, it doesn't even use that much right. water. New technology is really Less than I much. even thought. Yeah. And you know, there were some concerns and, and I can understand it. Some of your sure. folks love the summit so no much question. they were they were so concerned it would have a negative impact. And I think we made most of them feel better when they realized it's going to be across the lake. Yeah. It's going to come in off of Warrior at Arkansas. You know, in fact, may even help the summit because I think you're going to have some of your summit members maybe gravitate over to here. So I think we addressed a lot of that. But I think, I think when people start hearing the information, I think now even some of those folks are going to be, be pleased and excited. and. Uh, uh, maybe slipping in and using the slides <laughs> occasionally. Uh, there was a lot of talk about the water park, and yeah, that's a component of it. And but but that's not uncommon anymore, Rick. Uh, 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 even smaller cities are doing these large rec centers right. now with a water component. Now, is right. that not right? No, absolutely. I mean, that's almost becoming a standard yeah. item. Uh, you know, Burleson uh, has one that our some of our residents envy to have, and. And uh, Grapevine and South Lake both have centers either under construction or increasing right now that will go well over 100,000 square feet as well. So it's, again, not bigger to be say we're big. Yeah. You, they won't hear that. What we're doing is putting things and elements in that are legitimately going to change more lives. You know, one of the other issues that was talked about is um, the cost to operate and... Uh, you know, what fees will be, you know, unfortunately, I mean, in today's time, you, you, you will have to charge fees. But, but I know one thing, our, our mayor and council, they, they want to find a real good balance on that. They want our folks to be able to afford to use it. Uh, I think that's why some of your vision about trying to find ways that can generate revenue from outside of our city. Uh, when folks are coming in, paying a premium, say, to use the water park or you know, there may be sponsorships. People are going to want to have their uh, uh, their company we think so. associated with this. We think there's going to be all kind of opportunities. that. So I think one of the goals of this mayor and council, and I know of, of you, will be to find a rate structure that will carry the facility, maintain it properly, but will also make it affordable. And you're going to look at a lot of things, I mean, uh, to, to do that, Rick. I know you. So... I know that's your goal also. That, that's what I'll be working a lot on during mm -hmm. the next two years is doing that. We love to have a naming partner of this, and people would laugh at that at outset. Again, to our citizens, you will have a building, a facility, a park that's unlike anything in America. 200 different cities have visited the summit. Three foreign countries have visited the summit. It's been open six years. It's still the envy in our profession. So... I think our citizens are going to be changing what other cities are like in years. I get excited from that because they're coming here and they're trying to put their package together. 
all started by our mayor, our council, by you, and by the engagement of our citizens. We're changing how communities, in my opinion, are going to be built in the future. Oh, I don't, I don't doubt that at all. Well, let's see. A couple other things I want to talk about uh, on this subject. Um, number one, let me think. The take just a moment. We you, you used the term a few minutes ago, inclusive playground. Yes. I mean, I know what that means, but a lot of people may be. What did he mean by that? Uh, and uh, I'm glad, Tom. I'm glad you brought that up because Park Board would uh, probably come <laughs> and revolt. It's probably their in all with all the excitement you've heard of the the Central Park improvements in the Epic. I promise you, the number one passion is this all-inclusive playground. There are some cities, and we've, Ron Rock is one of our latest cities that we've been able to see this. This is going to be a park. This is going to be a playground. Forget ages. Once again, this could be any age playground. But it's for people with any type of physical or mental challenge that you deal with, your relatives deal with, your friends deal with. Too many times, cities just say we can't afford that and, and they don't get involved in what we call the therapeutic recreation end of our business. We're gonna be just the opposite. Our residents are gonna have a place uh, to come and to enjoy. Now, I would like them, if they have experience in any of the physical or mental challenges, you know, pick up the phone, call us, because we're gonna have a committee representing every one of these challenges. And we're so lucky in our community. Dana Dempsey, a resident of Grand Prairie, is one of the nation's top experts in therapeutic recreation. She's the head of the Scottish Rite Hospital, and you know how uh, oh, yeah. famous they are, their therapeutic recreation wing. She developed golf programs that actually people play golf with all types of physical and mental challenges. And we're really proud of that. Dana's gonna in get involved in this project. Oh, that's great. So right. we have already yeah. people that are coming in that says, I have autistic child. Perfect, We ha there's equipment. And I think some of the parents, grandparents, some of your friends don't know that there are equipment and there are there is a physical layout of the park that's gonna be taken into play. It'll be Texas's largest such facility that will be guaranteed a part of phase one of this of this next project. Well, Rick, that alone is going to bring people from all over. And it's I, the right thing to yeah, do. You know, I <clears throat> I remember when my kids were young. Uh, I was in another city at that time as manager, but we would drive to another community because they had a large playground, and it was a free outing that my kids loved. So you know, we're going to create that. Uh, it, 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 now you're going to end up doing all the playground's going to end up being huge. Oh, the playground! It, it'll, 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 when it's done, yeah. and I don't want to promise it's all one phase, but yeah. as the playground's done, oh. I think America's largest playground could be it. We're looking at six different lands, uh, so uh, this will be the first land. <laughs> so uh, of uh, what's going to be extremely special, getting kids. You know, our national organization's motto for the summers in. Uh, out, excuse me, I'll get it right. Get out it right. is in. Out is in. Getting people outside. Central Park is going to do that. Is going to do that. It's going to help that. Well, I know. Out I, is in. I know that was one of our favorite free fun activities. So that is something I'm excited our city is going to offer. And, you know, Rick, uh, one of the things we've talked about is uh, on part of the trails, uh, something I'm excited about mm -hmm. when you start talking about changing lives is we've actually had conversations with uh, a uh, foundation up in Colorado uh, that promotes values about using some of their materials in our trails. But, you know, there's no reason when you start talking about changing lives, it doesn't have to be just physical, but, you know, we want our facilities to promote good values, good citizenship. And uh, I, I think there's all kind of opportunities out there. So I, I don't know, I, I get excited just when I talk about this project. Let's, right. let's talk some logistics, okay? We're Going out for architects immediately. Kind of walk me through a, just a quick time. We uh, actually, uh, and we had some of those questions during the process, mm -hmm. uh, Tom, and we didn't want to go out and, and spend millions of dollars. We wanted to make sure every word we said, everything we put in print, we could deliver. And so we spent money to make those. We know where it's going to go, approximately those type things. Now, the, on, on uh, Thursday, uh, well, of this week, an RFP is now out. Uh, we're giving uh, architects three weeks, architectural firms three weeks. 
We'll comb those down to three architects, three or four architects, bring them in for interviews uh, in another three weeks, two weeks after that, so just five weeks from now. And then we'll be uh, recommending an architectural firm uh, to our council. If we keep all the dates that we think we can, we'll then bring, and we've learned this, and it's been very successful in Grand Prairie. We also bring the construction team in early. And as we did Central Park, and as we did our public safety building, and now most all of our buildings, because there's some value engineering there that they can also help the architects come and actually we all get more for our money and we get a more quality product. It's worked tremendously. So we'll bring them on. So Tom, with that, probably nine months of design and, and tw nine to 12 months of design and then construction, our goal right now is to open in, in 2017, and we've said that. We really feel we can hit 2017. We'd love to do that May of 2000. If I had any choice right now, and I know you would too, kind of hit the Christmas season for outdoors as kids get out in 2017. Uh, we're going to take our time to do it right, but uh, I think we've got a good blueprint to get it done there. You heard it here, Rick Carroll, 2017. Most important, my granddaughter's here in this room. <laughs> oh, no. And that extra pressure is killing me. You know her. <laughs> I you do. do not want to deal with her if no. you can't deliver that because she wants it tomorrow. Ellie's going to want to dance in that She facility, wants it so it's tomorrow. Be good, so. So. One other thing I want to make clear is you talked about, uh, you know, that may be in the, that's in the first phase. The, l let me talk just a moment about the financial structuring. Uh, we, the council gave us authority, if it was voted, and it was, that we could issue $75 million of debt uh, that our sales tax would pay back. Uh, the sales tax may not let us do that all at once, so that may have to be done in stages. The other thing is, as the sales tax comes in, it can be used, some of it can be used for operations, and some of it can be used for expansion. So the initial design will have a master plan. Right. And again, you were talking about, say, the, uh, the uh, playground. playground portion. It may be done in phases. Now, you've committed to do the... Uh, inclusive. Inclusive on the first phase. But, but it could be done over... It may be several phases in right. some years. But it's safe to say uh, we're going to be able to... The first phase is going to be a wow. It's going to have... The, everything we everything talked about. Everything we showed and put in print is going to be in phase one. Yes. And there just may be some components Additional added add later, yeah. you right. know. One thing we've learned, like uh, with uh, water parks or anything you do, is you got to keep them fresh. Right. You, you know, you want to add a new attraction or a new whatever to make the kids kind of keep the enjoyment or not just mm -hmm. kids, but everybody. So, but phase one is not going to disappoint anyone. No. No, no. I didn't think so. And we didn't talk about the amphitheater, but the our arts council uh, is very excited. Uh, they've been playing at the summit, and their numbers are just skyrocketing on Friday nights in April. They'll have a really a permanent home that we're really excited oh, for them. That will be well. gorgeous. Very excited. Uh, and they're doing some great programs. Oh, so. Incredible. But, you know, Rick, again, that's back to the whole theme is what you and the council wanted was something that would touch people's lives in all areas. And that synergy is going to make it happen. You know, my dream is someday... We're going to be able to go out there and you're going to be able to have dinner at a restaurant. You know, we've left pad sites there on the lake. How beautiful that mm. is. You know, your kids can be out in paddle boats out there and they can go across and see an arts, you know, walk across or take a paddle boat over and go over and see an arts program that they're putting on in the amphitheater. All kind of things are going to come to life. So, Rick, thanks for Our pleasure. coming in today. And uh, folks, I'm Tom Hart, city manager. Uh, if you've got something you want us to talk about on a program in the future, please let us know. Or if you have any issue or any problem, we're here to serve uh, our great citizens of Grand Prairie. And we're going to put Grand Prairie on the map with some of these uh, great things. So thank you. Look forward to seeing you in future programs.